Ed, when you're doing math, do you feel that you are discovering what's already there or inventing what has never been uh, uh, true? Uh, I think anyone who does math or physics feels that he or she is discovering truth, not inventing things, but mm -hmm. discovering them. That was always there. Yes, and that yes, you're a, yes. an explorer yes. trying to find uh, it. In math, one feels that one's exploring mathematical truth. And, and, <clears throat> and so what does that mean? Does that mean that uh, mathematics is sort of in this platonic heaven, as some people sarcastically put it? Or? Well, you know, I can't contribute to philosophical understanding. I won't try. <laughs> I'll just say that calculus, I'm sure, has been developed on other planets if there are advanced civilizations on other planets. Mm -hmm. Any civilization that tried understanding the natural world would find that they needed calculus to understand the motion of the planets. And if they happened to live in a solar system with only one planet, they would invent calculus to discover, describe the motion of projectiles <laughs> that they could see around them, or balls rolling down an inclined plane as studied by Galileo. Or they'd invent calculus for purely mathematical reasons because they were curious about the relation between the volume and the surface area of different shapes. And no matter where they are in the universe, they would come up with the same answer. Yes. Calculus. <laughs> I'm sure calculus is universal. The things we argue about uh, in daily life are not universal. They're particular to us, but calculus is universal. Uh, is, that, is it the case that it, it is necessarily true in all kinds of universes? You see, I would say so, yes. Calculus is universal in that sense. So Maxwell's equations apply in, in our universe and anywhere that the physical conditions are similar to the ones we see. Any advanced civilization will discover Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism. Yeah. But you can imagine, if the multiverse is correct, you could imagine conceivably another civilization that wouldn't experience Maxwell's equations, but they'd experience a different set of elementary particles. They'd still have calculus, though. <laughs> so wh why do you think calculus is, is so fundamental? You seem to be putting it on a different level than other kinds of mathematics that... I was only giving calculus as an illustration. Okay. Calculus is very fundamental. Um, we could discuss the integers. So the, nat the natural numbers, counting, one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. I'm sure any civilization has tried to count. Um, then if you get interested in going a little bit beyond counting, you might explore prime numbers. And then soon you'll eventually be led to questions that people started asking in the 16 and 1700s. And among many other things, you're going to find you need calculus. <laughs> Mathematicians, uh, physicists, uh, and certainly you have talked about the beauty of, uh, of, of, of equations and how they work together. How, how, can, how, how do you define that, that beauty? Uh, sometimes it's uh, simplicity, Einstein's e, mc squared, or, or, or his equation are very simple and small and relate very massive ideas together. You know, mass energy and the speed of light in Einstein's equation. It's not obvious why the speed of light should be in there, but for, intuitively. Uh, but some, some things that people think are beautiful are extremely complicated. Uh, the standard model is, looks like a mess if you just see it on a piece of paper. String theory is uh, famously extremely hard mathematics. So wh why is that beautiful? Well, if we take the standard model as an example, the ideas it's based on are actually subtle, more than complicated, and they're very beautiful. <laughs> now, the beauty of a physical theory, or let's take Einstein's theory of general relativity, nobody's going to tell you that the math there is easy, but it's extremely beautiful. The beauty of something like that theory, or even something more basic like Newton's laws of motion and his use of calculus to solve them, um, it's hard to convey if you don't live in the world of math and theoretical physics. But it's very real. It's like the beauty of music. So asking me why an equation is beautiful is a little bit like asking why a piece of music is beautiful. If you've heard it and you've experienced it, you know that it's beautiful. But you might have trouble putting that in words and explaining it to somebody else. 
So let, let, let's try. I mean, you've been working obviously in string theory and many of the yes. equations that you, you feel are beautiful and you've worked on, I'm sure, orders of magnitudes of more equations that didn't work and you feel are not beautiful. <coughs> so how, how do you distinguish between the two? I mean, what is it, what is it to do? I mean, so, simplicity, uh, elegance. A, a nice equation gives you more out than you put in. Okay. That's one partial answer. Okay. So, in, for example, in string theory, you put in some assumptions and then out pop gauge theory, which is the bread and butter of particle physics, mm -hmm. Einstein's theory of gravity, and a hypothetical new structure called supersymmetry. You're getting much more out than you put in. Okay, so that's, uh, that's, a, sig that's a significant factor. Yes, but um, I actually would like to give a more extreme example. But I want to take now not the full standard model, but just the part of the standard model that describes the nuclear force. Mm -hmm. It's called quantum chromodynamics. So that actually is simple. It's not just conceptually simple, like the whole standard model is, but even the building blocks that are needed are simple. The equations are incredibly complicated to solve. Mm -hmm. But once you have sort of learned your lessons, you've learned about quantum mechanics, relativity, and quantum field theory, mm -hmm. uh, when you learn the language in which the theory of the strong interactions is formulated, it's actually simple. Mm -hmm. It's incredible that such simple equations can give birth to such great complexity. Nuclear physics is incredibly complicated, but it's described by extremely simple equations. Mm 